Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. I've got Bitcoin up here, guys, on the hourly, and um, we're still seeing this steady trend. Bitcoin trading at 26,500. That is extending into the rest of the market. XRP down a little bit. We did see uh, a steady incline for XRP ever since this dip back early on Thursday, uh, and now we're seeing the price hovering roughly around 51 cents. But I mean, nothing really to write home about. I mean, ultimately, we're waiting for those huge market pumps. That is what's really going to get the market up. Right now, the market cap's still sitting in and around $1.05 trillion. So that is off the high, guys. Remember, at the height of the last bull market, we saw a $3 trillion crypto market cap in 2021. And we're still down quite significantly, actually. So, uh, you know, we've lost about two-thirds of that market appreciation. Market participants are still feeling the fear, or at least the retail traders are feeling the fear. But this is when institutions, guys, are picking up cheap cryptocurrencies. And this is the exact thing I am doing too. And I'm posting all my trades on my Patreon. So uh, for my patrons, you guys already know about what I'm trading. And for only $5 a month, you can follow me too, guys, if you are interested. Uh, the And you know, <laughs> I push it now because this opportunity is going to go away in a year. We're already going to be looking at targets. So, uh, you know, for those signups, it might be a little too late by that point in time. Uh, we're right now, you know, still seeing the market fairly depressed, but st but fairly stable, which is a good thing. Not too much really to write home about when it comes to activity in the market, even just bringing up the total market cap and uh, let's just put it here on the daily we really haven't broached this level of support. So critical support here, just shy of $1 trillion. Uh, and the market has remained relatively stable, up a couple billion here or there, but really, again, nothing terribly remarkable. Now, September has, uh, you know, historically been one of the most bearish months for cryptocurrency. So, you know, still keeping an eye on uh, some possible high flyers that might surprise us in this bull run. The thing that we have to wait for first though, and I have no doubt, that altcoins will rally once Bitcoin hits this price target. This one coming from Titan of Crypto here. Bitcoin to 48,700 before the halving. So he's noticed something interesting on this Bitcoin chart. You might want to bookmark this one. He says, so never in the history the halving occurred without Bitcoin reaching the 78.6% Fibonacci retracement level. First cycle price reached it four months before the halving. The second cycle, it was two months before the halving. And the third cycle, it was 12 months before the halving. So this is what he's bringing up here. The four cycles are rather three previous cycles before this current cycle that we're in. And the fact that uh, the Fibonacci shows Bitcoin did go up to the 786 each and every time. So what he's saying is Bitcoin to 48,700. I was a little confused by this, to be honest with you, because uh, bringing up Bitcoin here on the daily, I don't know if he just got his numbers wrong or what, but, uh, you know, throwing a Fibonacci on here and uh, just kind of bringing the chart up here, you guys can see the 0.786 here, okay? That would actually bring us to a level of roughly 57,400. So I'm not entirely sure uh, where he's getting this $48,000 level. Nevertheless, an interesting observation uh, if the Fibonacci's do in fact check out here. So, you know, another thing that we're going to be waiting for, April 2024 is going to be an interesting time in crypto once Bitcoin does experience that next halving. And whether it's 48,000 or 54,000 or whatever, uh, I have a feeling altcoins will be rallying with Bitcoin. So I'm not forcing any trade entries now. I will let you guys know that, uh, but I will be posting when I am entering. And sometimes it's a last minute decision. So for my patrons also just wanted to let you guys know that uh, I am going to be posting the trades basically 10 minutes after they occur, just to give me some time to edit the video real quickly. And it's usually within 10 minutes of me actually trading. Crypto Insight UK also brought something else to my attention. An interesting observation here with regards to uh, this fractal pattern of Bitcoin. Now, I'm not going to play the video, but I will link it here in the description of the video if you guys are interested. He took this fractal pattern of Bitcoin and superimposed it on the XRP chart. Now, in this video, he does say that he did extend the trend a little bit. But it is interesting to note how human behavior works. I think more than anything, uh, you know, human behavior plotted on a chart. That's basically what a chart is. Okay. Human psychology when it comes to trading and how similar these trends were. Okay. So we started it at the all time high back in uh, late 2017, early 2018. Again, the bottom fractal is Bitcoin and the top chart is XRP. Uh, and then something in here was really strange. June 2019 for Bitcoin, we did see that pump and this was the same style of pump. Okay extended the fractal pattern, but this is when we saw XRP hit its inter-year high in 2021 at the height of the last bull market. More of a consolidation phase and 
Well, I think you guys can see what he's getting at over here. Not to say that it's going to happen that way, but, uh, you know, human psychology is definitely something to be paying attention to. Remember, guys, be fearful when those are greedy and greedy when those are fearful. So anyway, I wanted to thank Crypto Insight UK just for posting that, guys. This one from Mr. Man here. It took 400 years for paper money to be adopted. Crypto is being adopted faster than the internet was. And this is a presentation from SRM. Listen to how the presenter talks about the crypto industry vis-a-vis uh, -vis the internet, comparing the two emerging technologies to so something very, very comparable, I think that we can get behind. Listen to this. So now that we've done that, um, we'll just take a step back on looking at adoption to understand why it's important that your team would be discussing these risks and opportunities for your institution. Um, so Chris, crypto is being adopted as as fast, if not faster than the internet. Roughly 70 million wallets have been created. Um, in 2020, it was actually 50 million. Um, I also throw in this fun fact, it actually took 400 years for people to adopt the paper money when it first was introduced. So um, it takes some time, people get used to it, and uh, you know it, it evolves. Um, even if many of you on the call today uh, have not as actively gotten involved in crypto yet, there is an estimated 200 to 300 million users worldwide who are currently using it, and that continues to grow every day. Um, the, the, obviously, the, the asset class, 2 to $3 trillion, although, it, again, it dipped a little bit over the weekend, but it's, it's definitely fluctuating, but likely on the trend to, you know, be... 10 trillion dollar asset class in even just a few years so she said it not me this is on track to be a 10 trillion dollar asset class in just a few years and uh, you know this isn't the first time we've heard this we're seeing the volumes of some cryptocurrencies being traded on exchanges uh probably because institutions now are realizing you know there are going to be coins that are going to be valuable and um well who knows where the other coins will end up. Of course, in the XRP community, we tend to notice when XRP is moving across exchanges. This one coming from XRP Crypto Wolf here on Twitter. So Whale Alert just noticed another 120 million XRP transferred to a BitThumb wallet, the aforementioned XRP chunk of 120 million coins was evaluated at about $61.1 million. Uh, well, some think that it was a tremendous purchase made by an anonymous whale in reality, according to the additional data provided, uh, these 120 million XRP were transferred between BitThumb's internal wallets. So probably, you know, for fund distribution. But the fact is, you know, even if they are transferring it internally and it doesn't mean it's a big purchase or whatever, they're obviously doing it for a reason. So anticipating a big purchase, a big sell, uh, maybe sending it to uh, some institutional client. Well, I mean, we really don't know. The fact is, if nothing was happening, obviously these coins would not be transferred. So something is certainly brewing. Anyway, I wanted to thank XRP Crypto Wolf for posting that. And so the crypto industry, we got to remember, guys, it's two parts. One part speculation, the money-making part, the part that's going to get us very, very rich this time around. But guys, the second part here is the real-world utility, and that is the end game, the long game here, using DLT technology like RippleNet to perform transactions, and that's becoming more and more apparent as the years go on. And as that becomes more and more apparent, we're starting to see banks do things like this, abolish cash. So this is coming from Australia. The Australia-based uh, Macquarie Bank says it will launch a plan to eliminate all cash, check, and phone payment services in January, shifting to a digital operation by the end of 2024. Here is a quote. Between January 24 and November 24, we'll be phasing out our cash, check, and services across all Macquarie banks and wealth management products, including pensions and super accounts. So unapologetically just saying, no, we're not going to offer this service anymore. We're going fully digital. And this is just one example, guys. We've been starting to see this more and more in India. I know uh, over the last decade or so, there's been this huge push to go cashless too. Uh, and so we're seeing it in Australia, India, many other places in Asia, the US, the last holdout, but you never know that might change as well. I uh, wanted to shift gears a little bit because John Dean did come out with some positive news, guys. He just released a book, Poverty, Violence, Drug, Sex, Addiction, Abuse, and race, all things we're not supposed to talk about nowadays, but I do. John Deaton, food stamp warrior, guys. I will link this in the description if you guys want to check out uh, John Deaton's book. It is available on Amazon. I am looking forward to getting my copy very, very soon. So just wanted to congratulate John Deaton. The XRP community owes you a deal of gratitude for what you've done uh, for XRP holders during the lawsuit. There it is, guys. If you want your copy, you can follow the link in the description of this video. Uh, another point here that I wanted to make just with regards to uh, XRP utility and spend the bits. Now, they've been busy, 
very, very busy. They've been using the XRP ledger for years for payment solutions. Now John Deaton too is apparently a part of the company. Payment systems for digital assets, fast, secure, using the XRP ledger and low transaction fees. They just released this video recently, just uh, kind of highlighting how Spend the Bits works. Uh, I'm not going to play it, but uh, I will link this in the description of the video if you guys want to get a more detailed explanation on that. They also came out with this most recent announcement. Okay, thank you, Genfinity. We're excited to announce that next week we'll be rolling out some significant updates. Among these updates is a cross-chain USDC testnet demo that's seamlessly integrated with Circle. This demo will enable the Spend the Bits customers to deposit USDC from various supported chains like Solana and XLM and easily withdraw them to Algo, Hedera, and more. Stay tuned. And guys, this is Jay from Spend the Bits explaining what is going to be happening with the brand new Spend the Bits update. This year, we have created a software to, to help the, you know, the small regional banks or the MSBs, small MSBs, you know, for their cross-border payments because the payment rails are up upgrading. You know, you know, ISO 200 implementation, which I was involved in, uh, you know, that is coming, CBDCs are coming. And that now the uh, new area, you know, revolves around real-time payment system. And all the, you know, legacy of, uh, players that we have in the, in the, in the market right now, they're going to face this problem very, very soon that, you know, once the government uh, or this um, uh, this Fed now has come out in the Canadian region, it's, a, it's called Lynx system. But it's it, they, these are the real based, uh, you know, payment system. So that's why we created this. This year we created a cross-border, uh, you know, CRM based system uh, to help out uh, some of the MSBs or the regional players with the CBDCs. And that CBDC will also be interoperable, obviously, with fiat segment and with stable coins. So boom, some brand new updates. They're coming from Spend the Bits. They're doing some great things in the space. And uh, I am looking forward to uh, seeing how all that rolls out. I'm also uh, keeping my eyes open for the El Salvador update. I know they've been working with El Salvador too uh, to implement Bitcoin payments a lot more seamlessly. Uh, I know El Salvador has been having problems with their Chivo wallet. So uh, congratulations, guys. Jay, you're doing an amazing job, brother. Rathal Kahneman here bringing this to our attention too. Apparently there was a study coming out of Kyoto University examining XRP price during and after the 2018 bubble. So going back to 2018, real quickly here, the XRP price bubble. I mean, this was uh, part of that legendary bull run in 2017, 2018. And so the study is here. I will link it in the description. It's quite lengthy. So, uh, you know, if this is the kind of thing you guys like to go through, uh, again, it is in the description for you. I know some people have taken to chat GPT to kind of uh, decipher the code here, although uh, it is very complex. The analysis though, of time series data by cross-correlation matrix provides useful information. In the cross-correlation method, the correlation is measured for different time-dependent variables, such as stock price data, foreign exchange rate, or even uh, medical data. However, in this study, we have used snapshots of weekly weighted directed XRP transaction networks to measure the correlation between the regular nodes we have considered uh, their embedded vectors. Correlations between the components of the regular nodes are represented by a correlation tensor, a double SVD, uh, has been used to get the singular values of the correlated tensor. And so what they noticed, essentially, the long and the short of it, was that there were nodes that correlated to driving the price back at that particular time. So not to say that it would occur, you know, in this coming bull run, but at that particular time, they identified a set of driver nodes during the bubble. And those driver nodes were supported by Ripple's impact fund. So interesting to note that Agent Smith here posting this, which nodes, who owns them, what were they doing that was special and are they still active? And so Rath Economist just uh, responded here. So nodes here doesn't refer to validators. Uh, they even define wallets as nodes in this text. So more network points, so to speak. They are doing mathematical analysis, not network IDing. Now we know validator nodes are more decentralized now than ever. Uh, at that particular time, I believe Ripple did have the majority of them or at least a 50-50 share roughly, give or take. They did have more of them. Uh, but now they're more decentralized than ever. And I think, uh, you know, at this point in time, Ripple's nodes have dropped off quite significantly. So interesting. And it's going to be interesting to see how this bull run plays out. Guys, this bull run is going to be different. I have a feeling than the rest. And so I cannot stress enough. If you guys are interested in knowing what I'm doing, because I'm changing it up. You know what I've said in the past? I mean, I'm still bullish on XRP. That goes without saying. I'm still holding a portion of XRP for the long term, for the real world utility. But other than that, my trading strategy completely changed. And I explain why on my Patreon. And this is why I'm also diversifying into different coins. And uh, for those curious minds, you can get an insight on why I'm doing this. Of course, 
you know, it's all part and parcel to what we're learning every single day here in the space. Subjective views here on Twitter also bringing up uh, that Ripple partner Temenos just demonstrated a live demo with CBDC capabilities. And here is the report. Temenos continues to innovate in preparation for the central bank digital currency future and now successfully demonstrating uh, consumer CBDC wallet capabilities built with the Temenos banking platform. So clearly a logical step for a company like Temenos to get on board with CBDC distribution down here. It says for the latest proof of concept we built on top of earlier work, which shows how banks running uh, the Temenos platform can integrate with CBDC platforms such as Hyperledger, Besu, and R3 Corda. We have now executed an additional set of use cases across non-custodial wallets, opening from mobile apps built with Temenos Visualizer, transaction signing uh, to funds from deposit accounts integrating to the platform, management of offline payments, and synchronization of transactions with the core ledger via the Temenos fulfillment service layer. So goes into uh, more detail here. I will link this in the description if you guys are interested in the nitty gritty. Some of the highlighted points though, ensuring security with private key generation with the app secure enclave safeguarding against external threats demonstrating stage offline payments in this proof of concept using nfc two mobile devices could communicate securely no internet required which uh, i also think is quite interesting probably using uh, text message technology or something similar they also ensured that no double spend occurred uh, by maintaining a secure local record of available balance and so here it says, you know, their vision is clear to complete end-to-end -end retail CBDC ecosystem. They successfully showcased issuance, distribution, and exchange of CBDCs, making strides in the world of digital finance. So Temenos, uh, one of those Ripple partners, obviously uh, also on board with this new financial frontier, CBDC, central bank digital currencies. This is where it's all going. So they've got to be ready for it. And it looks as though they are doing just that. So I wanted to thank Subjective Views for posting that. Also, guys, breaking news. It looks as though JP Morgan is throwing Ethereum under the bus. Ethereum Shanghai update has been disappointing. This coming from JP Morgan. Yes, at the center of the ETHgate scandal, the one bank that has uh, had Ethereum inside their back pocket. They are actually coming out and saying, you know, the upgrade, disappointing to say the least, Ethereum Shanghai upgrade implemented in April does not appear to have increased activity on the world's largest smart contract blockchain, as many had hoped for, JP Morgan said in a research report. While the shift from proof of work to proof of stake that resulted from the merge upgrade meant that the energy consumption for the Ethereum network collapsed by more than 99%, the Ether supply is shrinking and staking rose sharply. The increase in network activity has been rather disappointing. So now they're realizing the follies of their ways. And so what is going to happen next? I mean, who knows how long their contract is with Ethereum? I'm sure, you know, they've got a contract written up considering this is the blockchain for, uh, I mean, you know, for all intents and purposes, all evidence is pointing to JP Morgan trying to rig crypto blockchain in the US at least, you know, having regulators... <clears throat> SEC try to do their dirty work for them but now they're turning around and they're saying Ethereum is basically a piece of crap luckily there are more solutions out there and uh, again this is why I ask about the contract because do you guys remember back in November of 2021 when JP Morgan made this exact comment courtesy of Anders here on Twitter JP Morgan said if Ripple does win the SEC lawsuit XRP is poised for significant adoption JP Morgan said this clearly now we're getting closer and closer to an absolute positive verdict XRP already has clarity the on and off ramps are going to be open for XRP trading in the United States once again so not only is this bull run going to be looking good I have a feeling more and more banking clients are realizing that uh, you know maybe we should just go with the superior technology if you can't beat them you might as well join them boy what a pricey mistake <laughs> that would have been uh, had JP Morgan just joined RippleNet to begin with. On top of which, we're getting more news from FedNow, which is Ripple enabled through Valente. This statement coming from Eric Van Bramer here, guys, and uh, for those of you guys who do not know, he is the vice senior vice president of the Federal Reserve Bank in Chicago. So uh, this is just his LinkedIn, which I will link in the description of the video for you. And here's what he said, guys, in a podcast courtesy of Mr. Man here on Twitter. You can look at the ACH network and you pretty much have ubiquitous reach to all financial institutions in the US. And that's going to take us some time with instant payments, whether that's the RTP network or FedNow. Uh, we are extremely excited by the, the pipeline of customers that we have right now. We're extremely excited about some of the, the third party service providers we're working with on their pipelines. But I don't see us being a ubiquitous to all 10,000 financial institutions uh, anytime in the next year or two.
And so it's going to take us a little bit of time till we're ubiquitous, which is going to be important for user experience. So in a year or two, ubiquitous with all 10,000 connecting banks, guys, that brings us to 2025, the purported height of the bull run at a point when XRP is going to have the most liquidity. Let's put all this into perspective now. Not only that, more people might be even trading XRP more than the other coins. If this ideology persuades retail traders, and it'll be a little hard to persuade retail institutions, though, have definitely got it down. Caitlin Long here, guys, explaining how the industry is going to change. Listen to this. I don't defend the industry. And I was talking with somebody else who got into Bitcoin quite earlier than I did, actually. We were debating whether 90% or 99% of the industry even still needs to burn to the ground. There's a lot of crap here. And it is in some ways a repeat of the tech stock bubble of 1999, just so much crap. And yes. it will not succeed and it needs to be flushed, but markets are flushing it. So 99% of the industry needs to crash and burn. Caitlin Long is saying it. Brad Garlinghouse has said it in the past. The spec market is only going to look so appealing for so long. This is why I'm changing up my strategy, guys. Prepare, diversify. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.